So this is my uh, third and last uh, introduction to our uh, more interesting part, uh, um, namely session of uh, answers, um, questions and comments and answers. And again, I'm very sorry that I am unable to answer all your questions and, and comments. Uh, but I think that uh, also not um, responded questions are important uh, because we can we can transfer them to the next time. So some of the questions which uh, I was unable to answer uh, our last meeting perhaps uh, will find uh, its uh, answer uh, today uh, uh, during our last. Uh, uh, Christmas and uh, the New Year. Uh, so, uh, after uh, reflection, uh, meditation, because it was a kind of not only a rational reflection, but also meditating on the destiny and fight of uh, Socrates and his defense uh, against false accusations, and also the comparison between uh, Socrates uh, Jesus' uh, uh, false accusations and his silence uh, toward these accusers is uh, very significant. Sometimes you can learn more from uh, silence of someone who is accused without any reasons than from violent discussion. So. Uh, now, my question, what, what we can learn from this both, both histories? And perhaps we can add uh, to uh, this uh, two uh, dramatic uh, processes of Socrates and, and Jesus, uh, also a history of Moses as a, as a founder of, uh, of Judaism, of Jewish uh, religion. I think there are some elements which are also good to include in our reflection on Socrates. He uh, was uh, older, uh, was living 500 years before uh, Socrates, a little bit um, more in, in the history of, of uh, Egypt. Uh, Egypt of pharaohs, and as you know, uh, for example, uh, Sigmund Freud uh, considered uh, Moses or Moses as a, as Egyptian. And after we have a lot of interesting interpretation, what he learned being educated, uh, he grew up on the on the court of pharaoh. So how far um, he was uh, shaped by by Egyptian culture is very interesting question. Uh, and the fourth figure is Buddha. Uh, more or less in the same time he was living as Socrates in, in, in Europe, in Athens. In Greece, uh, Buddha was living in, in Asia, in uh, North uh, India. And uh, his uh, activities, his uh, uh, proposition to live differently than it was in his time uh, could also help us to live better our own life. I mean, you, you see these four uh, different inspirations from Socrates, Jesus, Moses, and Buddha could help us to uh, collect some inspirations uh, which will allow us or help us to reflect upon the place of philosophy in our own uh, life. Uh, so, what what uh, we can we can uh, learn from this uh, four figure? By the way, uh, I'm again not very original in my in my uh, way to propose you. Uh, this kind of reflection, uh, a great uh, German philosopher, uh, Karl Jaspers, uh, wrote uh, a booklet about uh, these four gentlemen as a, as a charismatic figure, as the big founders 
of um, uh, of our Western civilization. So, uh, of course, I'm I'm you know using my limited time just to to push you uh, your way of thinking in this direction. And of course, I I don't pretend to to be able to to develop. Uh, my um, thoughts in, in, in a very articulated way is just to inspire uh, your thinking. Uh, so about Socrates, Jesus, I already spoke in, in my first and, and second introduction to, to our class. So let us, let us uh, uh, stop for a moment uh, uh, and reflect uh, uh, about uh, Moses and his uh, role. Uh, in in Judaism, so apart that he's uh, founder or perhaps renew someone who renewed uh, Jewish religion because the founder father uh, are patriarchs, right? Abraham, uh, his son uh, uh, Jacob, uh, Isaac, and so on and so on, and also women Sarah. Uh, uh, Rachel, many others, uh, but what is important that he uh, transmitted to uh, Israelites who were living in uh, in a very bad condition in Egypt. Uh, they were slaves, and they, you know, lamented their uh, life to to God, and. Uh, this lament of, of um, uh, Israelites uh, was listened by God, and God uh, told to Moses that I listen to, I, I hear my people, so please tell them that I will uh, liberate them from Egypt. So, you know, I'm just simplifying the story, but the fact is that the Moses was a leader who um uh, helped uh, the slaves these Jewish slaves to go out uh, from uh, Egypt so we have a description of these dramatic events in the book of Exodus and uh, you can you can read it uh, of course but what is important that after Moses Moses uh, gave to the people 10 commandments the so-called decalogue but in the final uh, days of his life, when he was uh, already almost entering in promised land, um, he, uh, he died. God showed him, but said, you cannot enter there. Of course, it's a myth, it's, it's, a, it's a metaphor but it's showing that the real leader is not focusing people's attention on himself, but is indicated, indicating above himself. Not I am important, not me, but you are important and God who is saving you. This idea of uh, great autonomy, of being in direct contact with transcendence is something which are uh, illuminating when we contemplate the life of Moses. So, and uh, although he is a, a, pro a prophet, the big uh, religious leader of, of Jews, they even don't know where he was buried, where is his grave. And I think this is the symptomatic that we cannot uh, adore, we cannot uh, uh, give our attention to other men. We we have to to be aware that nobody is perfect, so to say. And you see the same logic with uh, Socrates, Jesus, Moses, and the same with Buddha. You remember what was uh, the satisfaction of Buddha, that he was not satisfied with surrounding way of um, uh, pray or of giving service to God or, or to adore him, giving sacrifices, etc. And he discovered 
his own inner world is the most important. And the way to reach this illumination was very important, right? And this is why he detached himself. He was born again. Born again means that you are changing your world. And this is why Buddha is inspiring till today a lot of people already 2,500 years, because he was not focusing the attention on him, but on the dynamic of discovering autonomy uh, by every human being. We are equal. We, we should not follow others. It's a very radical, but I think very true uh, statement by Buddhists who are saying, you want to be a Buddha? You want to reach illumination? You know, to you want to, to understand the mystery of life? You have to kill Buddha. Means you have to kill uh, images or your own uh, imagination of what Buddha should be because the Buddha should be born again in your own inner uh, world. So to conclude, and I hope that you, you will ask me many questions because some of my stat statements like this, uh, you have to kill Buddha in order to be a real Buddhist, Buddhist or, or Buddha, but if you, if you reflect upon, uh, this is a very true. You have to be um, an uh, autonomous actor of your life. You have to be aware that your destiny, your life, your future is in your hands. So you, you cannot follow others. You have to be um, uh, your own master. And I think in this four uh, figures which I presented so briefly in, the, in, in, in a very simple way are uh, helping us to discover philosophy as a way to reach maturity. We, can, we could add, uh, you know, from different period, from 18th century and then enlightenment, the great philosopher of modernity, Immanuel Kant, who asked this fundamental question, what is enlightenment? Was ist Erklärung in German? He was uh, writing a very interesting essay. That you are mature, that you are not following others, that you are not listening what the other are saying, but you are discovering, you are waking up from sleeping. This is, I think, the essence of philosophical uh, thinking, of, of philosophical um, uh, methods. And uh, if you want to be a philosopher, you have to, <laughs> to use your own brain, your own mind. As uh, after a new year in, in um, in uh, January, we will uh, reflect upon another figure like Hypatia, finally a woman as a, as a philosopher. And we will see how she was uh, facing obstacles around her. And she also was the victim of uh, invidious people who were jealous of her success. But she was also indicating only how we can discover uh, the beauty of our mind. And we will see uh, John Dewey later. We can see perhaps uh, James, William James, the representatives uh, of American uh, schools who uh, taught uh, Americans how to be independent, how to be pragmatic, how to find uh, a better solution for, for the mystery of life. So altogether, I hope it was uh, make sense what I said to you and uh, see you in class and let us have a, a good inspiring conversation with your questions and my uh, attempt to answer them.